What's that I hear? You're a Nuzlocker? What's that I hear? You want to stop losing? You want to keep winning more and more at these? What's that? You think that I look like such a massive man-child that I could possibly help you? Well, you'd be correct, boys and girls. Nuzlocke tips with Legacy Andrew, let's get it! Tip number one, double battles, triple battles. These things are deadly. SOS, warning, danger. Double and triple battles are rough, like really, really rough. What you wanna do in a double battle is aim down one side of the field, left or right. Pick whatever Pokemon is the least threatening and leave them on the field, leave them alone. Pick the side of the field where there's the biggest threat out of the two or even the three and eliminate them right away. Double up on them. If you kill them before they can move, then you're basically taking one move away from your opponent, which is incredibly strong, incredibly powerful, etc., etc. What you really want to avoid is your Pokemon being doubled up on or even tripled up on because, I mean, Chances are you're gonna lose a Mon if you let it take two attacks in one turn over and over again, or three. You can lose them in one turn. You have to be really careful here. And this is why bulk can be very, very important in these fights. You especially need to be careful about triple battles because the double ones, the double battles are pretty easy to see in the future. There's usually two trainers beside each other, like, to, uh, like a set of twins or like a couple or something like that. But the triple battles in gen five and six, they sneak up on you. They look like a regular trainer. And then boom, all of a sudden, you've got to do a triple battle. And it, it, it's rough. It's really rough. Avoid it if you can, but there are some forced ones. So be careful, learn where they are. Triple battles come out of nowhere. You kind of just have to learn where they are in gens five and six. And you need to make sure that the order of your party is correct going into this, because if you're caught off guard, you need to make a switch or two on the first turn of the battle. You could get tripled up on really easily. You could lose them on very quickly. Be careful. In the center, place your bulkiest Pokemon, the thickest of the thick boys on your squad, who can take a hit or two and not be too concerned, because at some point in time, they're very likely to take that hit. As far as general tips for these types of battles, I mean, uh, flying attacks can hit anybody in a triple battle. So if you have a flying type on the very left, you can hit all the way to the right and vice versa for your opponent, of course. So keep that in check. Uh, sleep, very powerful. Sleep is very powerful because you can basically take a Pokemon out of the equation for a couple of turns. And those couple of turns, when you have three attacks available to you every turn, can be absolutely crucial. These things can take a while to win or you can get them done very quickly. Also keep in mind that moves like Growl and Leer actually hit both opponents in a double battle. So use them, but honestly, if, if your best bet using a Pokemon in a double battle is to just go for Growl and that's your best option, perhaps you shouldn't throw them into a double battle because it probably implies that they're not doing much in the beginning, you know, in the first place. Uh, just be careful, bring your best mons, bulkiest in the center, attack one side, etc., etc. I'm sorry, I get, I get nervous, man. I've got PTSD from these things. Jesus Christ, be careful out there. Tip number two, explosion is spooky. Some Pokemon go boom. And remember PTSD that I just mentioned? I, I got it from this. I feel like I, I, I'm a pussy virgin version of one of those fucking dads that went to Nom because Jesus Christ, I think of exploding coughings and I cringe and I can't deal with it and I just need to close my eyes and take a deep breath. As the game goes on, it's usually a little bit less threatening. You usually have like a steel type, a rock type, something like that, or a ghost type even to be immune from explosion or the Pokemon that often aren't using stab because there's not a ton of normal type Pokemon that get explosion. Like it's usually coughing, um, what's his face? Uh, the wheezing, why am I forgetting names? A uh, fortress, people like that that are gonna blow up, right? Not a stab move, definitely going to be less threatening with time, but still be careful. Crits can always screw you. It has a lot of base power to it. And if you don't have a really bulky Pokemon that can take a hit, 
explosion even up into the level 50 and 60s, especially a crit, is going to one-shot you, so be careful out there. At the end of the day, you kind of just have to learn which Pokemon have explosion or uh, self-destruct. I mean, Geodude, Voltorb, Coughing, Pineco, like, like these Pokemon you, you kind of look at and you think right away, oh right, oh okay, okay, I can remember this. But there are some Pokemon like Drifblum and Skunk Tank that can learn it, that kind of throws you off guard. And if you're randomizing moves, Jesus Christ, anybody could have it at any point in time. So you have to be really, really careful. I'm having flashbacks and more PTSD attacks, thinking about the metronome only Nuzlocke. And I, I just, I just, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, if you are randomizing your run, be careful of early game Regis. Regirock and Registeel and all of them, at a very low, low level, they only know how to go boom. That's the only move they know. They will explode every time. Run away as fast as you can. Like I said earlier, your best bet is to just kind of always rock a uh, ghost, rock, or seal type, one of them. They're very, very useful all the way until the end game to avoid these moves. So just get used to rocking one of those on your team because it's probably gonna be, you know, for your own good. Tip number three, in the late game, start to plan for specific Pokemon. So in the late game of your run, chances are you've got a team that's pretty balanced with typings, with power, with bulky Pokemon and glass cannons, etc., etc. Especially if you've used all the tips from my past videos. You've probably done this by the time you get to the Elite Four, uh, even the seventh or eighth batch. But if you are randomizing your game, it can be really, really nice, especially in early gens, to think about legendaries or really strong Pokemon that could absolutely destroy your team. You could have a really, really balanced team and be looking really, really good. But if you're weak in any way to a Mewtwo, well, I mean, there's an out for the game to beat you, right? Don't give them that out, plan ahead. This is a far less applicable tip, obviously, to an unrandomized run, since in a normal vanilla run, you know exactly what the opponent is going to have. A little less fun, if you ask me, but hey, it's its own run, obviously. So this tip doesn't really apply to that. Although this is usually applied to legendaries like Mewtwo or Zapdos or what have you, you can also apply it to pseudo legendaries. If you have an absolutely amazing team and it shuts down literally every Pokemon in the game except for Tyranitar, perhaps you should tech in a fighting type move or maybe even a fighting type Pokemon in order to take on that Tyranitar because if Tyranitar destroys your team and you think, ah, I should be fine, I'll roll the dice. I mean, Murphy's Law, right? Like what, what might go wrong and could go wrong will go wrong. So don't ruin your run and get all the way, especially if it's all the way at the end and you have the resources available to you to avoid this, do whatever you can to counter these specific Pokemon. Although losing a Mon might mean less coverage, usually with four or five Pokemon, you're pretty covered as it is. That last slot is often something that's more of a support role. Well, there's no better support than keeping you from being swept, right? So take it into consideration if you have the resources. Tip number four is to save your PP ups and ethers for the Elite Four. This always just kind of seemed like common sense to me, but I've had people in my chat say, oh, why aren't you using that right now, etc." So I thought I'd throw it in here because it's, it's a pretty straightforward thing. If you find a PP up in the wild and you use it on your Charizard's flamethrower in order to have more flamethrowers, and then your Charizard dies, that's a wasted PP up. There are no real spots in the game where you can't turn around and go back to a Pokemon Center other than the Elite Four. This is the only real place that you will absolutely be tested when it comes to the PP of your moves holding up. Every other scenario, although it might be annoying, you can turn around in that cave, walk back to the Pokemon Center, run away from random encounters, etc, etc. You need your PP to last. Your PP must be strong. Your PP must be erect. <laughs> Don't be impatient. Throw them in the PC or at the bottom of your list of items and forget about them until the Elite Four. By then, you know exactly what TMs you can use, what Pokemon you're bringing to the Elite Four. You know everything that you're going to use until the exact end of the run, your victory. Nobody likes spending 10 hours on a run just to lose to the Elite Four because you have no more PP left on Fire Blast. Come on. Don't be impatient, you can do it, I believe in you. Don't be dumb, 
Save those things up, please. And the final tip of the day is that trading with NPCs can be huge. Now, this is more of a randomized tip once more than a vanilla. I play far more randomized, and by far more, I mean practically exclusively randomized runs as opposed to vanilla runs. I find with vanilla runs, it's it's been nuzlocked so many times, all the vanilla based games, that it's kind of been completely solved. I like thinking on my toes more, I, I like taking into consideration what you're going to go ahead and get and trying to work with that, it could be anything. Of course you could grab yourself a starter Mewtwo and decimate the entire game and it's not nearly as much of a challenge run. but. I find that the vanilla runs get stale. I don't know why I'm ranting about this right now. I, I just, randomized is what this tip is mostly for, but vanilla, it could apply as well. There are certain trades that can have a huge effect to your entire run. You could find in a randomized run, somebody that says, hey, give me a Weedle. I will give you a fucking Mewtwo. Obviously this would be pretty awesome and you would 100% want to take advantage of this. Even in vanilla, trades can have a pretty decent impact. Obviously the big whoa moments usually come from randomized when you get those disgusting all in your favor trades. But a perfect example of this is Gen 2, Whitney. Everybody always complains about Whitney with her mill tank and rollout. I, as a child, never had an issue with this ever. Why? Because I went into the underground in Goldenrod, I found somebody that wanted to trade me a Machop. And my Machop always destroyed the Whitney's stupid little mill tank. I, I don't even want to call it stupid because I have no salt about, <laughs> about Whitney at all. I never had an issue with this. Trades can have a massive impact. And especially in vanilla, like there are a few of them that are kind of set up to just help you win. <laughs> In a randomized run, it can be very unlikely to actually find the Pokemon that the other person is looking for. Like if they do want to trade Weedle from you two, I, the chances of you finding a Weedle might be very, very low because you can't just go back to a forest and do it and basically get, basically guarantee yourself to find it. You, there might be no Weedle in the game that's actually accessible to you. You might not ever come across one. But I think that trade-off is worth the god tier trades that you could possibly get. At the end of the day, it's basically just a little bit out of your way and an extra click of the A button to check out what trades are available to you. Learn the games, learn the locations of these trades, map them out in your brain slot thing, whatever, I don't know. I'm, I'm all over the place today. I've had a lot of coffee today. Map out the trades, figure it out. You can do it, I believe in you. You could get some God tier stuff with crazy one-sided trades and a randomizer or you can just save yourself the hassle of Whitney fucking your day up. Learn the traits. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all the tips I have for you Nuzlockers today. Thanks for checking out the video. If you liked it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It, it, it just, it makes such a huge difference. We just hit 1K subs recently. I have a video coming out about it. I swear to God, please, I swear I'm trying to, trying to set it up. Just, just please. And this series <laughs> is a big reason why we hit that 1K, so I'm really proud of it. So please support the channel, sub, like, all that good stuff if you did enjoy it. If you like Nuzlocks and you like me, come on over to twitch.tv slash LegacyAndrew. I'm there every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. We do some of the craziest runs you're going to see on the internet as far as Nuzlocks are concerned. So come check that out. And other than that, uh, I have no outro planned at all. Um, be a cool big dick individual and um join our family squad group of virgins i'm just rambling bye bye thank you for your time bye 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 why do you do this to yourself andrew <laughs>